Good day and welcome. Today, we're kicking off an exciting series on ancient Egypt. Throughout this series, we will explore how the Nile River made human settlement possible, delve into the lifestyle and beliefs of the ancient Egyptians, uncover their advancements in writing, mathematics, and astronomy, examine their medical practices, and discover the secrets of the tomb of Tutankhamun. We'll also learn how the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians spread to other parts of the world. In this first episode, we'll focus on how the Nile River enabled human settlement in Egypt. Here's a question for you, what do you think were the main crops grown by the ancient Egyptians along the Nile River? Share your answer in the comments below. Stick around until the end for some thought-provoking questions to test your understanding. Challenge yourself and see how well you've grasped the material, it's a fantastic way to boost your confidence. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Let's get started. Did you know? There is almost no rainfall in Egypt, which made life outside the Nile River nearly impossible. As a result, ancient Egyptians could only settle along the banks of the Nile, which is why the map of ancient Egypt looks quite different from the shape of modern Egypt. The Nile River is the longest river in the world. It's an incredible 6,650 kilometers long. Imagine a river so long that it could stretch across entire countries. The Nile flows through Egypt, and it finally reaches the Mediterranean Sea. But here's something interesting, the Nile flows from south to north, which is the opposite direction from most rivers in the world. Now, let's talk about what happens when the Nile reaches the sea. At its mouth, where the river meets the Mediterranean Sea, the Nile forms what is called a delta. A delta is a landform shaped like a triangle, or the Greek letter, delta, where the river splits into several smaller streams before it empties into the sea. This area is very fertile and great for farming because the river deposits rich soil as it flows. The Nile's Delta is one of the reasons why ancient Egypt was able to grow so much food and become such a powerful civilization. The Nile River isn't just important to Egypt, it also flows through or along the borders of 11 other countries in Africa. These countries include Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Eritrea, Rwanda, Uganda, Sudan, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and South Sudan. Can you believe that one river can touch so many different places? The Nile has two main parts, called tributaries, that join together to form the river. These are the White Nile and the Blue Nile. The White Nile starts at Lake Victoria, which is one of the largest lakes in the world. The Blue Nile comes from Lake Tanna, found in the highlands of Ethiopia. Long ago, the ancient Egyptians didn't know where the Nile River began, even though it was so important to their lives. Today, we know that the Nile has two main sources, or starting points. The Blue Nile begins at Lake Tanna in Ethiopia and the White Nile starts at Lake Victoria in East Africa. Isn't it amazing how the Nile connects so many places and has been so important to people for thousands of years? Long ago, about 10,000 years ago, North Africa and the Sahara was a vast land full of grasslands. The people living there were called nomads, and they spent their days hunting animals and gathering food from nature. But then, about 6,000 years ago, something amazing happened, they learned how to keep animals like goats and cows and how to grow crops like wheat and barley. But as time went on, the rain started to disappear, and the grasslands turned into a dry, desert-like land. This is known as desertification. There wasn't enough water for people or animals to live, so the nomads began moving closer to the rivers. They built villages along the riverbanks, where they could find water and grow their crops. One of the most incredible civilizations that grew from these early villages was Egypt. Civilization refers to societies that become bigger and more organized. Egypt became one of the greatest ancient civilizations, and its history is still remembered today. Ancient refers to something that is very, very old. 
Imagine, even after 4,000 years, many of the ancient monuments, tombs, and pyramids of the Egyptian pharaohs are still intact or undamaged. Egypt is located in the northeast corner of Africa, and its story is one of the most fascinating in the world. Let's move on and talk about agriculture and irrigation techniques in ancient Egypt. About 5,000 years ago, people began to settle along the banks of the Nile River. These settlements flourished due to the fertile soil, plenty of water, and protection provided by the river against the harsh desert environment. The Egyptians used the Nile for drinking water, irrigation, fishing, mud and reeds, and they sailed around it to transport goods. These boats transported cattle, stone, wood and people. Egypt is mainly desert, it is very hot and gets very little rainfall. The Nile River was a life-giving source to the people living there. Once a year, there were heavy rains in Central Africa. These rains caused the Nile River to fill with water, and by the time the river reached Egypt, it was in flood. When the floodwaters receded, they left behind rich, black soil that was excellent for farming. This fertile soil even reached the drier areas, allowing crops to grow where it would have been difficult otherwise. The ancient Egyptians called this black soil Kemet, which means the black land. Kemet was very important to the Egyptians because it provided the perfect conditions for growing the crops they needed to survive. Without Kemet, the land around the Nile would have been too dry and barren to support such a thriving civilization. The settlement along the river grew larger and larger. The Egyptians built houses close together on high land so that they would be safe when the Nile flooded its banks every year. The farmers had to move further inland. The ancient Egyptians farmed when the soil was good and stored food for the times when the soil was poor. They also learned to irrigate the land by making canals, which carried the water to their crops. They made use of simple equipment such as the shaduf to draw water from the Nile River to water their crops. They built canals and started irrigation so that they could water their crops. The shaduf was an irrigation tool used to fill buckets of water from the Nile to pour them into the irrigation canals. The shaduf was an important tool for ancient Egyptian farmers. It helped them lift water from the Nile River to their fields, making it easier to irrigate their crops. The shaduf had a long pole with a bucket on one end and a counterweight on the other, allowing farmers to raise and lower the bucket easily. This tool was crucial because it allowed the Egyptians to grow food even during dry times when the Nile's water was low. The farmers also used the Archimedean screw to lift water. The screw was lowered into the water. The farmer turned the handle and as the bottom end of the tube turned, it scooped up a volume of water which traveled up the spiral tube until it finally poured out from the top to feed the irrigation systems. Let's move on and discover how the Nile River helped ancient Egypt grow. The Nile River united people as they used boats to meet with each other and to trade. Through trade, the ancient Egyptians were able to prosper and progress. They became wealthy and started producing surplus food which they traded for metals, wood and other goods that they did not have. They traded with places near and far away. Over time Egyptian society became bigger and more organized. We call a big and organized society a civilization. As trade flourished, so did the wealth of Egyptian society. With increased prosperity came the need for laws to protect this wealth, leading to the development of a more organized society. It was not necessary for everyone to be a farmer. They could buy their food from the people who were still farming. They became involved in professions such as crafting, architecture, music and politics. A profession is a job that needs special skills. This was the start of ancient Egyptian civilization. Initially, ancient Egypt was divided into two regions, Lower Egypt, near the Mediterranean Sea, and Upper Egypt, near the mountains to the south. Despite sharing the same language, worshipping the same gods, and cultural practices, the people of these regions often did not get along. 
However, the Nile River played a crucial role in uniting these two lands. King Mens, who ruled Upper Egypt, saw the potential of a unified kingdom. He conquered Lower Egypt and brought the two regions together, creating what the Egyptians called the Two Lands. Over time, this unification led to the formation of a single, powerful nation known as Egypt. With a stable food supply and a unified government, ancient Egyptian civilization began to thrive, with people taking on specialized professions beyond farming. This marked the beginning of one of the most remarkable civilizations in history, with advances in various fields that would influence future generations. We've come to the end of today's lesson. But before we go, please try to answer the following questions before the answers appear. You can pause the video if you need more time. This is an important section to help you consolidate what you've learned. In the next video, we'll explore the way of life in ancient Egypt, including their crops, the process of making papyrus paper, seasons and agricultural cycles, beliefs and religion, and the role of the pharaohs. Be sure to check out the link in the description for more videos. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching, and take care.